on a previous Far Out Fiesta. I'll get uh, Dottie and Jimbo. I'll get Dottie and Jimbo if it's the last thing I do. It's That's My Rodeo Clown Junkie Christmas. Damn, did I black out again? I could have sworn I heard Cowboy Randy plotting against Jimbo and Dottie. I know Jimbo and Dottie are doing it like mosquitoes on, on a dog water dish, but I still need to stop Cowboy Randy from spoiling the holiday rodeo. At Cowboy Randy's rustic loft. What was the plan again? Hold on, let's do it real fast. Oh. Oh my God, oh baby, you were so good that time. Oh. Okay, now, mm. now Margo's plan was for us to pull a Christmas carol on Cowboy Randy. Christmas carol? Isn't that where you cheese grate on your scrotum? <clears throat> um, scro no, it's when. Margo? Margo, did you just get here? No, I saw your fast, sweaty orgasms, but I'm still, I'm still going to explain what pulling a Christmas carol is. It's, it's I, I, I can't hear you. Me either. A Christmas carol is when later that night. I'm nestled all snug in my bed. I suck it long, suck it plums. Never let it be said that Cowboy Randy went to sleep without a belly full of damn sugar plums. What the? Wow, that took effect fast. Out like a black light. I don't have time to explain what's wrong with that statement. Um, do you remember the plan? Of course I do. We brand his kneecap with a soldering iron until he groggily wakes up, and then we act like spirits and then show him the true meaning of Christmas at the rodeo. Ah, that is right. I'll just brand him real quick with a soldering iron. Oh, my kneecap! Who are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. I love Christmas pasta. Uh, I'm going to show you how greed earlier in your life turned you bitter. Yeah, how about you just do jumping jacks while I play with my wheelie? I'm going to solder you again if you do that. <laughs> uh, what the hell, man? Already awake. I know. Now, see, I am the ghost of Christmas present. Uh, what the hell is a Christmas prison? Prison doesn't sound a damn thing like present. Uh, would you mind doing jumping jacks while I play with my Willie? Margo? I've been here the whole time, just, just not an awful little. I, I think somebody put more drugs in my drugs. Oh, Margo, what the suck are you doing here? What? Would you mind? Oh, shut the suck up, bitch mouth. I'm the ghost of, of kicking names and taking asses. That can't be right. Uh, and, and I'm here to slap the true meaning of the holidays into your bitch mouth. The holidays aren't even Holidays aren't about material things like the, like the material my chaps are made of. Ooh, that is nice material, yeah. I know, I know. The holidays are about showing your best self. The holidays are about giving to others. Oh, well, then give me those chaps. No, no, it doesn't come in a package or in a stocking. It comes from the heart, which is why... I'm just kebobbing your heart right out of your chest. Here you go. Baby, I, baby, I always have skewers. I'll just skewer Cowboy Randy. Yeah. Okay, Jimbo, Dottie, you know what to do. Burn the mother sucker down. And a happy new year. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, may I have your attention, please, zooming to you from many places in the digital universe. This is Far Out Fiesta episode 218. Happy post-event holidays. Woo! I have your host and humble narrator, Richard Houghton. Please, oh, certainly please, is. Please Woo! give it up for our amazing cast, Kristen Keith. 
Yeah. Juliana Briscoe. Yeah. And Rob Hudspeth. Hey, before we get to the rest of the comedy, I do have a quick question for you. Have you ever purchased anything at an auction? Have you ever purchased anything at an, any kind of an auction? It could be online auction, be some kind of charity thing at a school somewhere. Have you purchased anything at auction? I can go first. It was really hard to find, but I purchased uh, the entire something series, I think, of Pepper Ann, which was a 90s cartoon that my daughter liked a lot, and I couldn't find anywhere except on eBay. So that was something I purchased at auction on eBay. What about you, Kristen? eBay, of course. Um, I can't even count how much I've <laughs> off of eBay. <laughs> to my clothes. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's really the buy it now feature, though. Yeah, I mean, how many times have you been, like you know underbid or outbid somebody I to used get to be bid outbid a lot back? I've in outbid day. people a lot. Oh, you're the oh, champion. You're sniper? I was one of the first original snipers way back in like when eBay first started. Whoa. Yeah. Nice. Set my timer. You, Rob, I had it. you ever buy yeah. anything cool or anything at auction? Hmm? Rob? Oh, um, I, you know, I, I, I bid on several silent auctions over the years. Yeah, I am, me too. I've never I bid on some anything. cool stuff, and I haven't <laughs> won any of it because I'm poor. Yes, me too. There's people at those auctions with a lot more money than me. Yeah. That's and they win crazy. those things. Yes, they do. It makes me with sad. Pepper. More money. What about you, Jules? You ever buy anything at auction? Oh, you got a puppy dog at auction? Auction? Oh, awesome. It's a sled dog. That's got him when I was, well, uh, my dad was going to kill me. I've had him for a very long time now. Yeah. So I'm like, they said they were going to put him down. Aww. And so I went down to five Aww. bucks and my hand shut up before I could even think about it. And my dad cool. turns around and my grandpa's laughing his butt off. Yeah. Me. And uh, dad's like, who bought the dog? Who bought the dog? Turns slowly to me. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> good my for you. And my pamphlet's like, let her have the dog. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Very nice. cool. So you actually had your auction item right there with you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Living and breathing. Wow. It's awesome. Ew, so cute. It's cute. Ew. Ew. As always. Cute. As always. Tonight's Far Out Fiesta. Episode 218. Happy post event holiday. Is based on a true story. Tonight's premise is simple. There's been a disastrous climate event. The world as we know it has ended. Survivors must band together with the Baba Yaga to reserve life in the universe. God, that seems dark for the holidays. Mm -hmm. uh, what's a baby Yaga? Well, it's a deformed or ferocious looking uh, old woman who lives in a hut and stands on chicken legs. Yeah, so actually, as I understand it, the, the hut itself is on the chicken legs. Uh, not exactly. Baba Yaga lives in the hut that, that walks around on chicken legs. So this show is about a chicken leg lady. Well, not exactly. Explain it better. A catastrophic event has destroyed the planet. It's up to a ragtag uh, band. Why does it always have to be a ragtag? Why? It's up to a ragtag group of survivors to maintain uh, life in the universe. You know, this sounds exactly like the monkeys meet Mad Max. Or hanging with Mr. Cooper meets the Terminator. Or Charles in Charge meets the Matrix. It's all of those things. <laughs> I doubt that very much. Yeah. Far out. Vamos, vamos de fiesta. Okay, we now go to the local fast stop just before the event. Ah, thank you. Thank you all for meeting me here, Holiday Planning Committee. Thank you for coordinating this, Judy. Uh, let's do what we need to do to make this holiday special. It doesn't hurt that this fast stop has three dollars all you can eat roller egg rolls. Mm. <laughs> I worry about the rest of you. You don't get enough to eat. <laughs> Chris, where did you come from? Olympus, from the mind of a grumpy Zeus, Judy, but that was another life. Well, more recently. 
Well, I was convincing Andreas, one of my favorite fast stop cooperators, not to throw out the roller egg rolls that have turned 50 rotations too many. After that, Andreas was going to disinfect the bathrooms. With the four of us here, they may need the extra egg rolls and the clean restrooms. <laughs> this fast stop has the cleanest restroom. Right, they use their own blend of restroom cleaning chemicals. They're mavericks. Yeah, I like that. I like that in an in an eight tier convenience store. We'll have plenty of two kinds of rolls, egg and toilet paper. Good thinking, Chris. Hi, talk. Ten four, Belinda. Roller egg roll. I've already had a couple. Hi, Judy. Hi, Belinda. Uh, grab a roller egg roll, and we'll get started in a moment. Can't wait. Chris, didn't see you there. Wow, these have a very different texture than they normally do. I made a space for us over here for our committee meeting. You know, there's there's nothing better than eating a roller egg roll at a fast stop sticky counter with broken chairs. Amen, sister. Now, before we uh, we get to discussing our national buffet day plans, is anyone concerned about what the scientists are saying? that a global climate event is coming. I'm not sure I believe it. A lot unless the rest of you do. Then, yeah. Disastrous climate events are something even I can't make disappear. You're useful in other areas, Chris. You, you have a transcendent aura. Thanks, Judy. Yeah. Oh, uh, <clears throat> well, scientists are concerned that refractive greenhouse gases are triggering a condition known as wind zap. I heard that. The event could occur as early as this evening. Now, wind zap, isn't that where windmills shoot laser beams? I heard that windmills also cause cancer. Well, that rumor has been widely debunked. Windows, windmills can, however, shoot laser beams that cause chemical burns if the refractive ozone gases reach the right propensity. The event will last exactly 26 days. Specificity is hot. Now, if that happens, won't it turn all of the formaldehyde-based car air fresheners into lethal weapons? My hang-loose air freshener could kill me. Car air fresheners are all sorts of... <clears throat> Car air fresheners and all sorts of other household chemicals will become treacherous murderers. It would be very difficult for any human to survive within that 26 days because the list of chemicals that are sparked by lasers includes just about everything everybody uses every day. Well, perhaps I could come up with an algorithm to redirect the windmill laser beams in a way that could be used to foam a billion lattes. <laughs> That's a lot of lattes. Five. Five. Okay, so I move to table the apocalypse talk so that we can discuss our national buffet day festivities. Second. Wow, Judy, you brought a PowerPoint. High five. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, oh. something's wrong with my stomach. Well, just to provide food for, for thought about National Buffet Day, next slide, <clears throat> next slide. National Buffet Day is a holiday that falls on January 2nd every year and invites everyone to head out to their favorite buffet to enjoy a variety of foods from fruits and vegetables to pizza, fried chicken, ribs, and a lot, lot more. Oh, oh, would you excuse me for a minute? Look. Egg rolls are doing a number on my stomach. Oh. Well, I only have I only have 19 more slides in this deck and two more decks after that. Can you hold it? <laughs> oh, I don't think I'm gonna make it. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Chris has already disappeared, and I, I'd love to see the rest of that PowerPoint. Oh, oh never never mind the egg roll. The egg rolls got me too. Oh, okay, now the moment they reach the fast stop restroom, refractive fracking gases align windmills shot laser beams and, and seemingly the earth's entire population was obliterated within a 26 day period or was it after the event 
It's a miracle that the chemicals they used to clean this fast stop restroom kept us all safe while the event took the lives of countless billions. Yeah, it, it, it's a good thing that our, our holiday planning protocol requires us to keep a 28 day supply of pure oxygen, uh, chicken in a biscuit and, uh, and magic water beans with us at all times. Yeah, it'll be a long time before I can eat another chicken in a biscuit. No, or another roller egg roll. <laughs> Chemical smells in the restroom are so strong. We're all wearing our oxygen masks. We had cell service long enough to plan this meeting when we knew it would be safe. Oh, we decided to be extra special, careful, and wait 30 days. It has been a rough 30 days since the event took out most of the world. Yeah, and those magic water beans are still giving me the squirts. I rigged up a rudimentary digital transmission device and have been pinging a signal I located. Oh, I'm glad we waited the 30 days to schedule this meeting. Has anybody been pinging you back, Chris? Most of the Earth's population is seemingly gone. I am getting a persistent tappity tappity from the East Coast. A persistent tappity tappity? That's great! Can you pinpoint where it's coming from? Within 100 miles, seems to be coming from Podcast City. I thought that place was abandoned. A lot of us did. Well, I mean, we know where it's coming from, but do we know who it's coming from? Okay, deep in the bowels of Podcast City, a pair of Baba Yaga sisters receives a message. Oh, we are so lucky that Baba Yaga's skin is impervious to chemical burns. <laughs> it is. If you moisturize. High five. <laughs> High five? Oh, I guess that was why most of the rest of the childbearing Baba Yagas were obliterated. Lax moisturization routine. <laughs> yeah. Childbearing? Why did you phrase it like that? What's that sound? Oh, someone or something is trying to contact us. I hope it's Megan Mullally. Oh, me too. Is it? I don't think so. Uh, let me see if I can respond back. Are you Megan Mullally? Would this be the time to tell them that, generally speaking, Baba Yaga appear in the form of a trio, and in our case, our third Baba Yaga sister is dead? So we drag Baba Yaga body around with us <laughs> maybe on a later transmission hey someone is responding to my ping well who is it oh i hope it's megan mulally me too uh actually uh, it seems to be a pair of baba yaga sisters which is unusual because they are generally trans maybe the third Baba Yaga sister is dead and they just drag her around. Yeah, you know, they, they were probably hesitant to mention that this early in their transmissions. Um, what is a Baba Yaga? Baba Yaga is a supernatural being or trio of sisters who appear as deformed or ferocious looking old women. Uh, in Slavic culture, Baba Yaga lived in a hut and are usually described as standing on chicken legs. Podcast City is known for their dense Slavic population. Now that we've made contact, what should we do? <laughs> Our first goal should be repopulating the Earth. Well, don't look at me. I've, the, the event scrambled my ute. Oh, samesies. Well, I could try to carry a baby in an enlarged testicle, if that would help. Well, you know, perhaps we should connect with the Baba Yagas and see if they would be willing to bear our seed. Oh, they're responding again. Oh, that's fantastic. See if they're of childbearing age. That's not really a proper question to ask a lady. Even a lady Baba Yaga? Good point. I'll send this message. Hello. If you're out there, we are humans, then we are still alive. 
Please respond. I'm getting another pig. What is it saying, Beatrice Baba Yaga? Well, these are these are humans still alive. Uh, they're still alive, Betty Baba Yaga. Let me respond to them. We are Baba Yaga sisters. We are still alive. So, <laughs> what did they say? Um, let's see. They 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 they, they are Baba Yagas, and they are alive. Ask them if they can bear children. Can you bear children? They're responding. That depends. Can you send us photos of your junk? <laughs> oh, they're asking for dick pics. I'm down. You already have some of mine, right? Yes. All right. Sending. Hey, they're responding. <clears throat> Uh, those are adequate penises for humans. We can bear your children. <laughs> oh, hey, they like the pics and, and, and can bear children. Fantastic. How do we get our semen to them? Okay, now the best option I can think of is training snake buffalo birds. I'll let them know that we'll be training snake buffalo birds to transport our semen to them. All right, there we go. All right, uh, they're responding. Oh, what do they say? Well, in order to conceive, Baba Yaga's must have lackluster sex in the missionary position. Uh, there, there's more, they're, they're, they're saying- um, Once we do conceive, our wounds will need to be implanted in the humans to gestate the baby to term. <laughs> oh, the women aren't gonna like that. Let them know we'll be training snake buffalo birds to fly us to uh, Podcast City so we can get it on. Sending. What did they say? Oh, it sounds like these two Baba Yagas are getting lucky. High five. <laughs> That's for you, Bonnie. <laughs> in less than two weeks, Talk and Chris were able to train snake buffalo birds to try to fly them to uh, Podcast City. I think they're here. Uh, cover up, Bonnie. Bonnie Baba Yaga. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know why we carry her around, dragging around this dead third Baba Yaga sister doesn't exactly set the mood. All right, let's see. This this looks like the place. Are you sure about this? Interspecies sex is a risky way to produce viable offspring. Hey, don't be a baby. I'll, I'll, I'll just ring the doorbell. Show me your penises to prove it's you. Uh, mine's already out. No, oh, and, and come in. You can put that thing back now. My bad. Yeah, we're down for the interspecies sex, but there's something we'll need to tell you first. We probably should have mentioned this before. Uh-oh. Yeah, do you have any idea how hard it is to train snake buffalo birds? Uh, they will still come in handy. Wow, we are capable and of childbearing age and have kick-ass wombs. We cannot carry a human baby baga to term. We will need to implant our baby, our, our Baba Yaga wombs into humans to finish cooking the baby. <laughs> um, wow, uh, Judy and Melinda are not gonna like that. It's the only way. <laughs> I believe the event scrambled their uteri. Well, um, luckily for you, Baba Yaga's wombs grow back. So we could potentially impregnate you two and extract your wombs and use the snake buffalo birds to get home. Then implant your wombs into human females. All of that is accurate, but there's another important piece. Oh, what's that? We can only conceive if you talk dirty to us. <laughs> uh, quiet, you nasty thing. 
Uh, you two are soiled. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> About an hour later. That was very mediocre interspecies missionary sex, but it seems to have done the trick. Good thing, even though we look old, we're hella fertile. Yes, I, I feel a baby is growing within me. <gasps> me too. Great. If you two will slough your utes, we'll be on our way. Uh, uh, we're still... We're still going to want some baby showers. Uh, we'll send out an evine. Let me get this straight. Those things in your backpack are Baba Yaga wounds? That's right. What was human baby Yaga babies inside? Correct, Amundo. Yeah, so what we'd like to implant them in your utes to grow them to term. Do you know how to do that? I mean, it can't be that hard. All right, I'm in. And seven minutes later. Good, good job, guys. <laughs> my external baby Yaga womb is so stylish. <laughs> I think I just felt the Baba kick. Oh, I think mine is trying to claw its way out of me. <laughs> mine too. <laughs> uh, Chris. Talk. What do we do? I think I have everything I need to make human Baba Yaga womb incubators. Oh, oh what? You got those at Kohl's, what, like right before the event? That's right. Oh, hurry up. This is excruciatingly painful. Done. There we go. Two baby Baba Yaga baby wombs turning in an incubator like a rotisserie chicken. Ooh. Man, I could go for some chicken. I'm so glad we made the decision to systematically harvest the Baba Yaga for their wombs. Oh, they didn't put up much of a resistance. I mean, I may or may not have reprogrammed the windmills to wind zap the suck out of Baba Yagas and pop out their disposable uteri to use for rebuilding our world. And then we have almost enough babies cooking to at least populate a city block. Or form a kick-ass drill team. I'm just glad that removing the Baba Yaga womb that had been implanted in me didn't leave any scars. <laughs> and I'm glad that before we slaughtered the final Baba Yaga for her womb, we made 3D copies of Baba Yaga DNA so we can produce our own Baba Yaga wombs. <laughs> We'll have the earth repopulated in no time flat. <laughs> our own mutants that will refill our world are kind of cute. That one has mm -hmm. one chicken foot and one human foot. Oh, 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 look, that one busted out of its womb and is eating another womb. Oh, that's a Baba Yaga for you. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, hey, hey, don't forget our big closer. Practical Kung Fu, Christmas. Whoops. Well, these are the greatest jobs ever. Sure are, bud. We are department store Satans. Santas. What's the difference? Both of them wear red suits. But one of them is the personification of evil, and the other is a jelly old elf with a nose like a cherry. I have an ear like a plum. Well, that's almost the same. Well, I'm, I'm convincing an educational elf who does not condone crack or meth not to mess around with Santa by pistol whipping him. Come fool, Lewis. Kung Fu, bud. Wow, you are really going to town on that elf face. I heard there were new Santas in town. <laughs> That's true. An elf who does not condone crack or meth, although he looks like he just got his ass kicked. Where did you hear that there was a new Santas in town? Well, chat room. You? A soft liar. They have to be soft. And we're just the two to stop them. Is this the department store where they're at? Sure is. Santa, 
May I sit on your lap? Uh, aren't you a little old? Well, I'm, I'm wearing leather pants. Hop up. And is that mistletoe, secondary Santa? Oh, well, see, actually, it's bud in my hair, you know, for my break. Hey, is that chloroform? Uh, where are we? Uh, there. We kidnapped you, and we're going to do... Oh, we're going to make you sell tainted drugs on Christmas Eve. Ain't Christmas! Kung Fu, Lewis! Kung Fu, bud! And this has been Far Out Fiesta, episode 218. Happy post-event holidays. I have been your host and my moderator, Richard Hogan. Yes! Please, yes. Richard! Please, please give it up for our amazing cast. Juliana Briscoe. Yeah, that's me. Rob Hudspeth. Woo! And Kristen Keith. Yeah. <laughs> Before we leave you, gosh, with the last show of 2020, Ooh, has wow. anybody got any final thoughts? I hope everybody has a great coming new year. Me too. Happy Better than this new last year. That's right. Me too. Sure. All right. Thanks, everybody. We will see you vaccinated. Next year. Bye.